Close students. Today we're going to discuss in this video briefly some lab techniques. Lab techniques used to separate liquids and solids. In your notes this week, you've learned about decanting and filtering and evaporation. And you've got a lab activity that will incorporate all of these lab skills. But I want to show you this video first in order to introduce you to these various techniques. So without further ado, let me uh, scoot over to our illustrations here of decanting and filtering, which you have in your notes from previously. And we're going to go over to a close-up view, and I'm going to talk you through both of these techniques in a laboratory setting. So let's head on over. And here we are into our virtual laboratory. And you will notice I've got several items on the table before us right now, starting with 100 milliliters of water. The quantity or the volume right now is irrelevant. Uh, it, it will matter for your lab activity, but we're just using water for illustrations. I have a couple beakers. I have some solid particles in the form of beads. I have a funnel and filter paper and a stirring rod. We're going to be utilizing all of these tools to help us today illustrate decanting and filtering. So first, we need to create a mixture of a solid and a liquid. So I'm going to add 100 milliliters of plain water to beaker A. And into beaker A, I am going to place uh, a certain quantity of a solid material in the form of beads. And I'm simply going to stir the beads into the water. So we've got a solid and we've got a liquid being mixed together. And as you can probably see, we are creating essentially, well, let me ask you. Would this be a heterogeneous or a homogeneous mixture? I'll hold it closer to you so that you can see. Is that heterogeneous or homogeneous? You can see how all of the beads have settled to the bottom there. If you said heterogeneous, you're absolutely right. We have not created a homogeneous mixture. This is not a solution. You can see that the water, the liquid, and the solids have already separated. And decanting simply involves, as you know, pouring off the liquid. I am separating the liquid from the solid. Oops! Uh-oh. One of the solid pieces got into Beaker B here. But for the most part, you can see that we were able to separate most of the solid from most of the liquid simply by pouring off the liquid. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Some of the particles are coming out. I'm trying to get all of the liquid out. Trip, trip, trip. All right. So we only have the solid material left in Beaker A, but as you can see, some of the solid beads actually went into beaker B. So I'm going to recombine the solid and the liquid here in beaker A, because as you can probably guess, as we talked about previously, decanting can be somewhat effective, but you may always get some solids coming through with the liquid. So it's not perfect. Okay. So that is decanting. Now there's another way to decant that I want to illustrate to you here. And that is with the use of a stirring rod. So I want you to watch carefully. I also want you to take notice that beakers have a spout. I think you can see this. Yes. Beakers have a spout. That is the pour spout. And the proper way of holding a beaker is always putting your hand, especially an unprotected hand without a glove, on the opposite side of the beaker as the pouring spout. And the reason for that, as you might be able to see here, 
as I poured this before, right there, I think you can see a drop of liquid has dribbled down the spout and it's still dribbling down. Whoop. When you pour out of a beaker, you may get some drippage. So you never want to grab a beaker by the spout end. Always hold the beaker on the side opposite the spout so that when you are pouring a liquid out the spout, any dripping that potentially can occur will not contact your hand. Today, we're just using water, but in the future, when we do lab activities, the liquid may not be water. It might be a strong acid or a base or some other chemical that might not react well with your skin. So always develop good lab habits by holding a beaker on the opposite side of the spout. All right, let me, let me add some additional information here about the decanting technique because decanting in the laboratory, uh, and I'm gonna demonstrate this again, by simply pouring off the liquid from the solid, there may be drippage, there may be splashing. This is not a perfect technique by itself. We got lots of solids that have been transferred over with the liquid. So, and there's also some splashing taking place in the beaker. Sometimes splashing in the lab is not a good thing because certain chemicals don't like to react with one another violently. Or if they're mixed violently, they will react violently. We'll get to that later in the year. So I'm gonna show you another technique of decanting using a stirring rod. Kissing the spout to the stirring rod while the end of the stirring rod is in the opposite beaker. Watch what happens when we pour down the spout onto the stirring rod. You will notice that the liquid is traveling nice and neatly, safely and slowly down the actual spout and into beaker B here. In addition, the stirring rod is preventing the flow of some solids down the stirring rod as well. So utilizing this technique of the stirring rod decanting makes the process a little bit more controlled. But let me take this opportunity to point out the stirring rod. I want you always to make sure that you make the stirring rod a safe tool to use. Let gravity be your friend and not your enemy. I was pouring liquids down this stirring rod. And if you watch, the liquids are still dribbling down the stirring rod and are dripping off the end of the stirring rod. You never want to grab the bottom of a stirring rod because if you do so, you'll be grabbing onto any liquids. Again, today, just water, maybe not a big deal, but in the future, it could be something you don't want to grab a hold of. So when I say let gravity be your friend, it also implies not holding a stirring rod upside down. Because when you hold the stirring rod upside down, even at an angle, any liquids that are on there are gonna dribble down and touch your hand. So when I say let gravity be your friend, always hold the top of the stirring rod, never the bottom of the stirring rod, and never tilt the stirring rod upside down. So in the laboratory, I'll be watching you. Always hold the stirring rod from the top and let Gravity be your friend, not your enemy. All right, so we've talked about decanting and some important information about gravity, about the design of the beaker, about where to hold beakers and where not to hold beakers, and where to hold, stir hold stirring rods and where not to hold stirring rods. But again, decanting isn't perfect. So I want to introduce you now to 
The second part of this technique of separating solids and liquids, and that is through filtering. So we are going to filter the contents of beaker A, the solid and the liquid, into beaker B by using two other things. First, a funnel. We're going to place a funnel into the second beaker. And into that funnel, we're going to place a piece of filter paper. But we have to fold this filter paper so that it fits into the funnel because into the filter paper, which will be in the funnel, we're then going to decant the contents from beaker A into beaker B. So we're going to decant and filter at the same time. And our lab activity tomorrow will show this in greater detail and we'll utilize both of these techniques and the third one in our lab activity. So let me explain to you now how we're going to take this white filter paper and turn it into a funnel shaped filter paper. As I hold it here, and if I hold it here, you can't see it so well. So if I hold it here, you can see behind the blue background that it kind of looks like the full moon in the sky. So imagine we start out with a full moon piece of filter paper. We take the full moon and we fold it in half. So we're taking the full moon and we're folding it into a half moon so that there's a crack right down the middle, folding it perfectly in half. Now we take that half moon and we fold it again into a quarter. Now it doesn't look like a quarter moon. It looks like maybe a quarter of a pizza pie perhaps. But this part is really important. If I hold it this way, you may notice that this quartered piece of filter paper has four layers now. I'll have to hold it at just the right angle for you to see it. When you do it yourself, you'll really notice it. But there's one, two, three, four layers of filter paper in this quarter fold. Now, you're gonna have to stick your pinky finger inside one of the folds, but it's really important to know which one. You don't want to stick it right in the middle because if you do, your pinky finger is going to go right through. That's not what you want to achieve. You want to use your pinky finger and have one layer of filter paper on one side, three layers on the other. Put your pinky all the way down to the tip and then with your other hand, pinch the filter paper so that it forms a cone shape, like a little ice cream cone. But this is now a cone shaped piece of filter paper. And if you did it right, if you put your pinky finger in there, you will not be able to put your pinky finger all the way through because that would defeat the purpose. So the filter paper has one layer on one side of the cone shape and three layers on the other. Now you're going to take that cone shaped filter paper and pop it into your funnel so that it takes the shape of your funnel. Unfortunately, with it all being white, it's a little bit difficult for you to see, but I think you get the idea. So the funnel shaped filter paper is now inside of our funnel. We're going to Make sure gravity is your friend. Place the stirring rod into the funnel shaped filter paper so that it doesn't go all the way through. And now we're going to decant using the stirring rod to help us. So as we decant, we're trying to hold back the solid material, but hey, oop, one of them might drip out but we are decanting and filtering at the same time. Trying to keep out the solids, but hey, whoop, I'm trying to purposely make some of the solid particles come through. You don't wanna do that on purpose, but notice what we're doing. 
the filtrate is what's going through both the filter paper and the funnel. Now, if you look, you should probably be able to see that some of the solid materials are being held back by the filter paper. That's what we want to do here. And only the liquid has come through. We call that liquid the filtrate. So now we have effectively separated the solids and the liquids by both decanting and filtering. The last process that we will use in the lab is called evaporation. And we'll see this when we get to the lab activity. We're going to use a heat source, namely the Bunsen burner, on top of which will be a little container called an evaporating dish on a ring stand. And we'll pour some of the filtrate on the evaporating dish to evaporate only the liquid away to see whether any solids have come through or not. But using these three techniques of decanting, filtering, and evaporation, we'll see during the lab whether you will be able to separate the solids and the liquids from the solution or the mixture that you will form. Hopefully that has been helpful to you and feel free to watch this again before performing the actual lab activity. If we were in person, you'd be practicing this numerous times before the actual lab. So until our lab activity, I am simply going to say for now, bye-bye.